lead vocalist of the cult band Slipknot as Corey Taylor. Although it is currently impossible to picture this team's work without his voice, few people are aware that the team's history may have been different in the past. The truth is that Taylor had to endure a lot of hardships, recover from alcoholism, and even come close to passing away. Fortunately, the musician handled the exams well and is still performing and recording new music. On December 8, 1973, the future rock icon was born in Des Moines, Iowa. The boy's parents did not cohabitate, thus Corey spent the most of his time with his mother and grandmother. Later, the vocalist acknowledged in an interview that, a part of Slipknot, had existed in his soul since he was a youngster. Taylor, then six years old, had watched the special effects impressed television series Buck Rogers in the 25th century, which had left an impression on him. Taylor's fascination with horror stories and desire for reincarnation both date back to his early years. His favorite holiday was Halloween, which he celebrated with creative costumes. Corey then developed a passion for music. His grandma owned a number of Elvis Presley CDs. Taylor selected gritty music when she was an adolescent. Black Sabbath was a band he liked. Unfortunately, Corey's upbringing wasn't entirely full of joy. The youngster first took narcotics at the age of 10, when he was already dependent on booze and cigarettes. I stopped doing cocaine and speed when I was 16 so I never had to say no to it. However, alcohol was actually what killed me, and I had been a smoker since I was 10 years old. Chantix was stopped, thank. At the time, I didn't want to. But everyone I was with said, I'm quitting. It's actually the greatest choice, besides giving up drinking, I thought. As a vocalist in particular. I got back a huge portion of my registration. However, every time I stop doing anything like that for health reasons, it just makes me better as an entertainer, singer, or writer. I've been able to compose some of my greatest thoughts ever when I'm not distracted. Taylor's problems were not going unnoticed, after twice overdosing on cocaine, he struggled for a very long time to kick his alcohol addiction. The grandfather of the young man, who obtained legal custody of her grandson, assisted him in getting back to school and leading a normal life, and even insisted that he take music lessons, salvaged the situation. Taylor started living alone when he was 15 years old and left home. I awoke in a trash can. I believe the folks I had been hanging out with abandoned me because they believed I was no longer living. Coming out of that seemed like a really important time to me. I was finally able to recognize my problems as a result of it. I needed roughly 10 years to fully understand them. But that was the first time I truly realized I had a dark place inside of me that had the potential to ruin me. So when I wake up, I have blood on my face, no shoes, and no t-shirt. I started walking from where I was 12 kilometers from my home and continued. I kept thinking, I've got to get out of here, the entire way home. I was 15. Taylor met with musicians Sean Economaki, Joel Ekman, and Jim Root at the new location. Stone Sour was founded by teenagers, who also produced two albums. However, they failed to become popular. And in 1997, Corey got a call that would change the course of his life, he was asked to join the fledgling band Slipknot. Taylor complied and quit Stone Sour. Although Corey Taylor was supposed to merely perform for the new band while on tour, he finally became Slipknot's lead singer. The group at the time also comprised Sean Crahan, Mick Thompson, and Joey Jordison in addition to him. Several musicians later joined the band. It's hard to believe now, but the crew as a whole felt that Corey's debut performance in Slipknot was a failure. It's significant that Taylor didn't wear a mask while performing. Additionally, the musician joined the crew for the second performance, and his voice fit the rock band's complete discography much better. The singer's face was then concealed by a mask that was worn by all members of the group and had a similar appearance. Although the performer's manner first seemed fairly threatening, it quickly became Slipknot's calling card. The group's debut album was published in the summer of 1999. The self-titled album Slipknot, according to the artists, had anticipated such success, the album topped all charts for a few weeks and sold twice as many copies in the United States. The group's subsequent album, Iowa, which was released two years later, enjoyed a similar level of success. There were reports that Slipknot will break up before the release of their upcoming album, or rather after their prolonged hiatus. 
But in 2004, the group finally released the album Volume 3 The Subliminal Verses, which is most known for the tracks Before I Forget, Vermilion, and Duality. A tour of the United States and other nations usually begins with the album's release. The Slipknot Band's discography, which generated a lot of controversy, was continued with the album All Hope Is Gone. Some music fans claim that the 2008 release of this CD was a flop. Others hailed the CD as the group's greatest effort. Anyway, Snuff, Psychosocial, and Sulfur are still in demand. In 2014 Slipknot released their fifth album entitled Five, The Grey Chapter. The songs Devil and I and Kill Pop were hits on this album. On August 9, 2019, Slipknot released their sixth album We Are Not Your Kind. Song Unsainted became a hit on this album, and in 2019 the album topped the Billboard 200. The End, So Far, released on September 30, 2022, is by far the last album released by Slipknot. The album once occupied the number two position on the Billboard 200. Corey Taylor has been able to take part in a variety of projects during his musical career. The vocalist has collaborated on songs with the groups, Apocalyptica, Damage Plan, Steel Panther, and others. In addition, Corey sang several solo songs and later joined Stone Sour, with whom he collaborated on numerous albums. Scarlet Stone was the subject of Corey Taylor's first committed relationship. Griffin Parker, the girl's son, was born in 2002. Additionally, it is known that Corey was already the father of a girl, born in 1992. Scarlett accepted Taylor's marriage proposal in 2004, and they were later wed. After the wedding, this romance continued for three years before the young couple ultimately called it quits. Stephanie Luby, a young woman, was the singer's second spouse. Although the singer prefers not to publicize the specifics of his personal life and relationships, he is open about the challenges he faced. In his autobiographical book Sickness, Corey revealed with his fans some information about his upbringing and alcoholism. Even the attempt at suicide, which he made after drinking too much alcohol and being depressed, was discussed. The singer published two further books in which he discussed his path to fame and what goes on behind the scenes of the rock industry. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.